Hey guys, good morning. I'm super excited because today is chicken day. I got an email yesterday that they were shipped, so I should receive a text at some point that they're here. I have a little bit left to set up in the coop to be ready for them, so I'm gonna bring you guys along for as much of the process as possible today. So the whole coop isn't quite finished yet. The guy who's putting it in for us, he's done a lot of work for us, like beautiful stuff. The greenhouse, the vegetable garden, the molding in Benjamin's room that we showed you, um, in the nursery tour and then the enclosure around our dumpster but he also has a full-time job and three kids um, that are in sports so he's super busy and he's been trying really hard to get this done by chicken day didn't quite get there but the inside will be done enough to keep the chickens for a couple of days until the run is finished so what i want to do is give you guys a tour of what it looks like right now like where we're at and what we still have left to do and then we'll get the rest of the coop set up so this is what it looks like right now you can see that the outdoor run um obviously we need to do some cleanup the door needs to be installed hardware cloth needs to be put on the rest of the roof and this side um and then We've still got, you know, all the painting. This whole building's gonna be painted. Shutters will be installed and a light above the door. Let me kind of back up. The door will be painted as well and we have to replace glass in that pane. The whole door fell over in a windstorm and that pane got broken out. Um, so, you know, obviously a lot of aesthetic stuff yet to do, but the inside will be good. So let's take a look in here. Can you guys believe this is where the root cellar was? So the concrete from the roof actually went all the way out here. They cut it off at ground level and it went up like this and then went over. So there is a little bit of concrete still left right here, but they cut the rest of it out to install the door. Um, and they took the whole side of the building off because the siding was starting to rot right here. And they just figured, you know what, let's get the framing solid and put new siding on and then we'll paint it. Um, we do need to bury a piece of hardware cloth about 10 to 12 inches underneath the soil um, to create like a barrier for predators digging in. I also have this pile of rocks, which we will be lining the base of the coop there'll be a flower bed here so you won't even be able to see it but we'll have rocks lining the base all the way around to prevent anything from digging so we don't really have predators around where we live we're right on the edge of town we have you know neighbors close by we get the occasional friendly neighbor dog that comes over and then just a couple of cats that roam around um so anyway i don't think we'll have any problem with predators but i would rather be safe than sorry and i kind of struggled with my choice of like what kind of material to use on the run because my parents use chicken wire which i love the look of it's not predator proof but they've had it on their coop for years never had a predator try to get in and they have predators out where they live um so it was kind of a struggle like do i go with what all the professionals say the hardware cloth or do i do chicken wire because it's pretty and my parents don't have a problem with it ended up with the hardware cloth I I like the way it looks and it's stronger. I'm gonna have climbing roses go up over this whole run. So those roses will create a lot of weight and on chicken wire, it could tend to stretch it and bend it. So I figured this was the best way to go. So let's head inside. There's not much in here yet. And I still have, you know, to put the litter down and I need to install some roosts. Um, but what was original in here was this shelf right here it's very strong and i figured it would be kind of nice to have right here just to you know hold some supplies this window was here and the front window was here i learned that light triggers the hormone that triggers egg production so if you have the ability to let in as much light as possible to the coop it's better for your chickens so while i was picking doors out i thought well let's pick out some that have glass so that it allows a lot of light in and then this window right here was really easy to install because the whole side of the building was off anyway um so they were easily able to frame that in which is awesome it also opens so it has a little latch and it opens to the outdoor run so the chickens can go in and out if we have this open also i can open both of these windows um, i'm going to tack a piece of hardware cloth on the outside of this one um, so, because this is the only one that opens to like the exterior like outside world um, so that will have really good ventilation so the light and ventilation are key also the size of your coop so i learned that you should have at least four square feet per bird that you have in your coop especially if they have to stay in there exclusively. Um, you can get away with a little less space if you have an outdoor run like we're gonna have, but I wanted my uh, hens to have a lot of space. I'm only getting 10 birds. We're getting 10 barred rock and 10 
uh, no, five Bard Rock and five Buff Orpington because of, supposedly they're the most docile breeds and really good with kids. I'm familiar with the Orpingtons, my mom had those, but the Bard Rocks will be new to me, but I think Benjamin will have a really good time with this. Anyway, they'll have plenty of space because this uh, chicken coop is at least, I think it's 10 by 12 or 12 by 12, maybe even a little bit bigger, and then they'll have the whole outdoor area as well. I am not gonna free range my chickens because as you guys know, we do plants um, and I can't have them out there wrecking all of our plants so we wanted to provide them with, with as much space as possible. I also ordered four week old birds which they say when you order those they'll come anywhere between four and eight weeks old which means they're coop ready. They don't have to have supplemental heat. They can just be put in the coop and they're good to go and I don't have to do the whole chick phase. So they'll when they arrive they actually won't be like super pretty birds. They'll kind of be in that awkward stage but I think it'll be nice because I won't have to worry about it. We are having, let me flip the camera around. We are having, cause that's a functioning light. We're gonna have a plug-in installed right up in here somewhere so that I can drop a heat lamp down if I need to like in severe winter weather or if later on we end up doing chicks. So I'm trying to think of the other essentials. So nesting boxes, they recommend one per every four hens. And so since I have 10 coming, I would need three nesting boxes. I ended up choosing four so that I could complete my square. And I just used old apple crates I got out of my parents' barn and I tacked a piece of one by six to the front so that they could hold some bedding in there. And I might tack like some really cute curtains because chickens tend to like to lay eggs where it's darker. Um, so you can put like little decorative curtains on there and they can go in there and have their little bit of privacy. And also I've got my feeder and then this is for the water. This is actually a hanging feeder and I decided not to hang it right now because I don't know how big the birds are and I really kind of just want to wait and see what the most like convenient spot is to put that. So I'm just gonna prop both of these things up on brick um, and then I can raise them up on more brick as the birds grow. The benefit of having them up off the ground is that one, it'll keep the mice out of the food if that ends up being a problem and two, they can't scratch a bunch of junk into the water and food and make a huge mess. Then the last thing I need to do inside here is get a roost and I'm not gonna actually set up anything in here until I have that in place. You can install like a two by four, um, either way, you can do it width wise or the other way. They don't recommend that you use like a clothing rod, like a dowel, um, because those are a little bit too thin. A regular tree branch that's got a you know fairly good diameter would be ideal and that's what I'm gonna go see if I can find at the garden center. Um, you can use like an old wood ladder that's leaned up against the wall and I think it's like eight to 12 inches per bird of roosting space. So I'm gonna go gather that, get that set up in here, and then I'll know exactly where the nesting boxes need to go and the feeder and all that stuff. And then we'll put the litter in. So for the litter, I'm actually gonna be using this right here. This is Sanicare. It's a hardwood bedding. Let me see if you can see. It's pretty fine right there. Um, and it actually acts as a really good litter. So you don't have to, the benefit is that when you put this in, you don't have to clean out the entire coop when it comes time. You can just use like a fine tooth rake to get underneath it and it's like cat litter. You can just remove all the droppings and then just refresh the bedding as needed. I do have some pine shavings though that I'm, they're kind of like a little bit more uh, wide like this right here that I'm gonna be putting inside the nesting boxes because there are some gaps in there and I wanna make sure that those are plugged up. I do have some straw um, and straw really isn't what, from what I've been reading, it's not really great for them because it can harbor mites um, and it can also um, like do crop impaction, which I don't know anything about yet. Um, but if I've got some bigger gaps in these, I might put a little bit of straw underneath the pine shavings. We'll see. I'm just going to kind of play that one by ear. I'm also going to be putting some odor control down. So I've got this right here, which with the ammonia from the urine, this like negates that and takes care of that problem. So I've got um, some treats, mealworms, some grit, and some food right there. And this super cute pot hanging from the little water spout. Okay, so let's head down to the garden center, see what we can find for roosting material. Hmm, there's some potential in this pile. I think I would like to have a couple of these rounds, maybe two, that they can jump up on. But look at all of these branches. I remember going and cutting these branches. We saw an old dead birch tree just laying in somebody's lawn like it had just been cut down and we went and knocked on her door and asked if we could take some of the branches off it and she did. So we just filled up the truck um, and that was, I don't even know how many years ago, but I can't believe I'm benefiting from that now. <laughs> it's pretty cool.
I got it all loaded up and I don't know if I've ever told you guys how blessed I feel to have such a wonderful resource right here. My parents with their garden center and like just all of the random stuff we have around here has helped me out at home personally so many times. Timing is everything. It looks like a load of espoma just got here for us. Awesome. That's actually what I need for my project right now. I needed more of this, so I'm super excited it arrived at the same time. I grabbed a couple bags. So this is what I'm gonna start with. I will add some more, but for now, I'm gonna keep them kind of low because these chickens are little. I don't know, maybe I'm underestimating them. But these branches are absolutely perfect. Look at them. And they're all like real sturdy the way that they're sitting. So I'm really happy with that. So now I'm gonna add some uh, bedding down below. I'm gonna add the odor control first, and you're supposed to, I just read the instructions. You're supposed to start with a clean, well-swept area and then sprinkle a thin layer of odor control over the area. And I'm guessing this is where they're gonna do most of their droppings because if you have proper roosting space, they won't sleep in their nesting boxes, so we shouldn't have a big mess in there. But I'm gonna probably sprinkle odor control and bedding, I don't know, in a good portion of this area because I just don't know what to expect. So I think that that's a pretty good start. I put just a tiniest layer of straw at the bottom just to plug the holes in all the nesting boxes. And then I did the thicker pine shavings in there. And down below we have our roosting branches. That's where I'll put the feeder for now, see how it works. And I did a pretty thick layer so that I could easily get under there with a tined rake and clean out as I need to. Um, and then I'm just not sure if I should do the whole floor. Like maybe I should. I sh I'm sure I will quickly figure that out. I just didn't want to get too thick of a layer or anything up next to the door. So anyway, I'm just going to fill the water and the feed and I think we're good to go and ready for when I hear that they've arrived. It's such an exciting day. So I just got the call that the chickens have arrived so we're heading down to the post office now to get them. How excited are you, Erin? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Hold me back. Yeah. You're not gonna dye them on these bright colors, are you? No. But no, they're, they get to be all natural. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Have you. Thank you. Yeah, you too. to dip their beaks in water like you would chicks when they arrive, but there's actually still liquid left in here. Like, I'm... Oh, there's one behind me. I'm really impressed with how these um, were packaged. See, look at this. There's some liquid in there and there's uh, some zucchini to kind of keep them going, but they were only in transit for about a day. So I think they're doing awesome. Oh, I just love this, so fun. They're just like right at home. And I, th I think that these fly a lot better than I give them, gave them credit for. I kind of thought they were gonna be a lot smaller. So I can work on getting the branches, like more branches in here, so they have higher roosting areas. This is perfect, you guys. I put one of the logs I brought home right here so I could sit in the coop and watch them. <laughs> oh, look at them. There's one little lone chick right over there. I 
also wanted to give you guys a quick update on Molly, the long coat German Shepherd puppy we introduced you to a little while ago. Um, so it's kind of a happy slash maybe kind of sad update. Um, I'm happy about it and I think Molly is really happy. Um, but what happened is we got her and within the first day, Russell, um, you know, he went upstairs, he wouldn't come down and he was pouting about the whole thing. And I kind of, I guess it kind of expected just a little bit of an adjustment period. And I know sometimes it can take a long time for animals to be okay with each other. I've never had a dog and a cat not get along though. And I grew up with both. We had them all the time as kids. So I wasn't really expecting that sort of reaction, but like the second or third day, something like snapped in Russell's little mind. And um, there, we have a pair of uh, French doors that lead from our great room to our kitchen, which we could close and keep Molly and Russell kind of separate from each other. They could still see each other, uh, but just until they got used to one another. And Russell would run and jump, lunge at that door and hit it at about two and a half, three feet up in the air hard like with his whole body and he would do it over and over and over again to try to get at Molly um, and when they were both outside if Russell saw that Mo Molly was out here he would come at her and he got her one evening like right in the nose and like cut her open right here it looked like she was like just dripping blood out of her nose and it was just kind of becoming a little bit of a problem and Russell was here first and I felt just so horrible that I had upset his life um, and I know things can be trained. You can train a dog to ignore cats and ignore that kind of distraction, but I don't think you can ignore a cat that's aggressively attacking you all the time. Um, so it actually kind of came to Aaron and I, we thought, you know what, Aaron's sister and her family just had a dog pass away that they had for years last fall and it devastated the whole family. He was an amazing dog, um, most especially their eight-year-old son, son, Liam. And they were looking into getting a puppy this spring for him and kind of just starting that whole process of looking, looking, and we thought, you know what, Molly would be such a wonderful dog for him. Such, she's already a great dog. She was, uh, like, she would follow us around. She'd sit, she'd lie down. Um, she was crate trained already, so she slept in a crate all night long. Um, and we just thought, you know what, with this adjustment with Russell not working out at all, um, I wonder if we gifted Molly to Liam and he, sh she got to go live with him and they have other kids, there's four kids. Um, so she'll have tons of activity and tons of playtime, probably a lot more than we could give her right now. Um, so the whole thing worked out just absolutely wonderfully. He was, I, I wish that, um, that we would have got to see his reaction when he was told that he was getting a puppy, getting her. He actually came to meet her earlier on in the week and they played in the grass forever. And she, Molly tried to leave with him. I was kind of like, hey, <laughs> I've been loving on you all week. Um, so it was just such a, like almost kind of a meant to be sort of thing. Um, and the wonderful part about it is that we'll still get to see her all the time. They're over here. We live about an hour apart from each other, but they're over here once or twice a week. So we'll get to see her a lot and see her grow up. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know because we introduced her and a lot of you were so excited and I was excited. It wasn't, I felt like I had become this person who makes in, in like impulsive decisions to buy pets, which we're not. We talked about getting a puppy for a very long time and it was a, like a thought through decision. And then once, you know, the whole thing with Russell happened that we weren't anticipating, I don't know. It just kind of like everything fell into, the, I think the right place and we got it all figured out. And I think we'll try again once Benjamin's just a little bit older and can actually participate um, because Molly did great with him, but they didn't really care about each other and he got knocked down a few times. And um, anyway, so that is what's going on with Molly. So at this time we have Russell who is a lot happier now. We have these wonderful 10 and little new chicks and then we have no who still hangs around and then there's another black and white cat who I think is no's maybe brother and we call him Malay so anyway that's what we currently have running around our house and hopefully one day we will um, add more and you guys are such a supportive and encouraging community and I know that a lot of you can relate to this kind of life with gardens and chickens and you know dogs and cats and kids and all that sort of thing and we're just I don't know, we're so excited we get to share all of these things with you guys. And um, I am so excited for Molly and Liam. In fact, before they even came and picked her up, they had her enrolled in obedience school. And that's gonna be Liam's summer project. He's gonna take her to training school. And um, I've received several pictures and videos of them playing and it's just, I don't know, it makes me feel so good because Erin and I are so busy and she did okay. She followed us around during videos, but I know that she was probably a little bit bored because I couldn't run around and, and play with her the way that she probably needed to be. So anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know. So I'm gonna end the video right here. 
looking at these 10 happy healthy chickens i ordered them online from murray mcmurray i think is what it was called i'll link it down below i might be wrong on that name but they have a ton of different breeds of birds and all kinds of i mean turkeys and ducks and pheasants and all kinds of things um, and I'll link everything else that I used in the chicken coop today. And I mean, this is going to be an evolving process because I'm sure I'm going to learn a ton as I go. And that's how I learn best actually. Um, but if you guys have any words of wisdom, please leave me a comment down below because I would love to learn, you know, how to make things efficient and easy and really healthy for my birds. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today and we will see you in the next video. Bye. Chickens. Mm-hmm.